Hey everybody, it's Nick. Uh, today we're going to talk about evolutionary design, which is going to involve genetic algorithms. Um, and you guys have all got the lab report uh, that I posted, and that's what we're going to run through today. Um, normally when I do this lab, um, I'm there. <laughs> and because we're all staying at home, I can't run through these things with you um, in person, so I'm going to try to do it uh, with this video. Um, so just, just to kind of run through the topic, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at is using the tools that come with grasshopper um under like the utility uh, heading here and you've got like the the solver here for like galapagos and that was written by david written the guy who uh, wrote grasshopper uh, but it's like a special kind of subclass uh of the uh like program but it's actually built in and that's and that's and that's really cool so you don't need any plugins or anything to use this uh and then there's these other ones here for fitness landscape and gene pool uh, we're not really going to mess with those right now, but uh, this is the main component that you're that you're going to need. Um, and it's really special, actually, because it actually works like backwards. You can see that these these um, will actually go backwards. So it's, it's just kind of like an uncommon thing. Nothing else can be plugged into it. It stops uh, here. But this is what we need to solve the different uh, kinds of problems that we have today. And in fact, that's what we can use genetic algorithms for. Uh, they're really handy because... Um, uh, basically what they do is they just try a bunch of different like solutions and they try to save the best ones uh, and then they take the best ones and then they and then they try a little bit more randomness and then they increasingly kind of narrow down um, the fitness uh, and the fitness means that it's you know something that that works uh, and again this is all based on like the metaphor of genetics right that in in nature um random like variations occur and the things that survive go on and presumably are more fit for their environment um this is going to be one of these things that's going to probably like uh make the fans run like in your computer it's going to make your computer run hot there's gonna be a lot of like calculations happening this is some pretty raw like computation um so you should you should be ready for that it's 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 uh, it's kind of like rendering in that and that it takes a lot of like computational power um, in the assignment, so what we're going to do is you, if you're basically going to see what the capabilities of, um, genetic algorithms are, or like can be, um, your answers will be different from, from, from anyone else's. This is just the nature of like genetic algorithms. Um, <clears throat> you might be lucky or unlucky, um, but, um, your numbers will be different. So if you ask one of your friends, you know, like, what did you get for this, for this question? It's going to be a different answer. Um, they will all probably be in the same neighborhood. Uh, but they will not be the same answer. So that's really interesting too. And one of the things I'd like to do in lab is actually have everybody run these things and then ask people in the class what they got to see who's, whose solver actually made the best uh, outcome. Uh, so if you guys want to, you should you should go ahead and ask people around and say, hey, like how did yours work? You know, like did you, did you get a really low number or a really high number? Um, that's something else too. Like sometimes uh, when you're solving for something, um, <clears throat> when you're using like a genetic algorithm, um, you might want to optimize something, right? So that means that you might want to make more efficient use of material, or you might want to make something that costs less. In that case, your fitness function, your fitness number, might be actually really low. Um, and and in other times, you want to you want to try to in increase the amount of shade that you get. For example, um, the 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 area of the shade might be large. Like you want to try to make that large. Um, and basically, that's what that's what fitness is looking for. It's, it's like if you're telling it to maximize or if you're telling it to minimize, um, that's that's what it's going to search. Excuse me for. Um, and you can access the options for it by double clicking it, and then you can say you know minimize or maximize. Um, you can you can change some things here, like you can change the population size and that kind of thing. We're not really going to worry about all that stuff. Um, yeah, and then uh, there are these blog posts here, and I really recommend reading um, the first one and the second one. Um, I think they're very, um, it's very good like conceptual background if you're if you're if you're interested in it. Um, not necessary, uh, especially because of the limit of what we're going to be studying here. But I think um, these these blog posts by David Rutten are really are really interesting, especially the one about fitness functions. I think that one. Um, if you're having if you're having trouble coming up with a fitness function, especially for multiple variables, uh, this one helped me quite a bit, and the comments on that one did uh, um, um, also. So anyway, that's that's all in there. Let's let's go ahead and get to it. The one thing you do need for plugins, which I think you probably already have from this class, is you need um, the Mesh Edit plugin, and that's something that I've that I've actually given you. Um, if you look at um, actually Mesh Mesh Tools GHA as a file. 
And um, as you've done before, you, you go into Grasshopper and you go special folders, um, components, and then go ahead and add that folder. Um, go ahead and add that folder in there. And I've got that right there, that mesh edit GHA. So anyway, <clears throat> that is one thing you will need. And then let's go ahead and get into the uh, to the first to the first question. So if you look at the lab report, it says open up lab A, uh, 9A and lab 9A Grasshopper. Um, and you're following the instructions from the video. So let's go ahead and open that up and then I'll kind of explain what the question is asking for. Um, I'm just gonna go into my lab files here. Open up that file and open up this file. <clears throat> And what, what's happening here is that this area here, this curve, you can imagine it's some kind of funky building or, or some kind of urban landscape or, or something, some kind of form. Um, and this point represents a person's view shed. Um, it's like where they're standing and then the kind of area that they can see, right, without being blocked by the like building. And this is actually, this is actually, this is actually called like an isovist. Um, it's a very special term in spatial um spatial uh, sciences um and uh, it allows us like to analyze like um you know like how far someone can see for example down a hallway or down a street um and then it's it's one component of wayfinding that helps determine how people know where to go right if you can't see it and if you're new um then you probably don't know where you're going right and so that that whole area of like the ice fist is really important um you can you can move these like sliders around and you can see like an animates, you can see that that view is changing. What we want to do in this in this example um, is is run the genetic algorithm in um, inside of you know grasshopper to try to find the point <clears throat> outside the building where you can see the most of the building, where you can see the most area of the building. Okay. <clears throat> and the first part of the question asks you to say, okay. You know, like move yourself around. Um, so anyway, go ahead and you know move these around and and, and, and kind of try to guess like where where you think is a good place to stand. Um, you, you can move it anywhere within you know the bounds that I've given you, and make an assumption. You know, right? Like as like a human designer, you know, knowing what you know and just knowing what you can uh, study from like your own um, kind of experience with this, like where you think that would be, and then go ahead and run the uh, solver and figure out uh and, and basically like let it figure it out and and the way to do that is you go all the way over here and you're gonna, you're gonna go ahead and do like a double click on the on like the galapagos like component and then you're you want to maximize so that's fine and then go to solvers and then you're going to say start solver okay and that's going to run and you can see it like trying various things here you can you can you can see here let's just kind of stop here so these are the numbers that it's getting. And right now the maximum number that it's getting is 203.304. You can see the number, the decimal numbers get very, very uh, high. That's because sometimes the differences between um, solutions can be very small. Um, and anyway, um, so this is, this is the solver. And these are, these X's are parts of the population that get like killed, basically. These are the generations here. So you can see the solution space started out very big, and then it gets kind of narrower um, as the as it gets closer to the maximum. Um, and it's going to keep trying, you know, different things. Like it's basically what 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 happens is that the genome, the genes, right, are these two sliders here, x and y, and so that's the population. And then the fitness is this number here, which is basically calculating the the edge of this thing and saying how how much of a perimeter can i see it doesn't count these two lines here i should tell you that so it's looking at this these edges and saying okay what's that number okay so that's it it's like if you randomly like play with these things how do you get this number to be as big as you can and that's exactly what this is doing so let's go back to it i lost my solution okay so run it again keep running it <clears throat> so 203 seems to be kind of a maximum and it's not really moving like it should actually oh there was a little jump there 208 so it should it should be you know running um and if it gets stuck like if you think like well maybe that's not um maybe that's not the real maximum or i don't think that's right you can you can go ahead and add 
some radiation to it, <laughs> kind of a metaphor, you know, 209. Um, and that'll kind of give it an extra dose of uh, randomness. You can kind of hit that. And sometimes, oh, look, see, it actually did a little thing there, 2010. Sometimes the results are dramatic, like when you when you expand that um, that space by by adding a bit more like mutation to the pool. Um, other times it, uh, it it won't be at all. So it's not like magic. You know, just keep hitting that button and it like fixes things. Um, like I'm just gonna stop here. So it looks like 210 is what I got. Okay, so you guys can see what what you got for that one. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to the next question. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm in the wrong directory already. All right. Uh, hang on a second. Nope. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay. So the next one has two files also. So I'm going to go ahead and say open. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up. Um, there's, and there's, um, yeah. Okay. Hey. Uh, lab B here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so what have we got? Well, this is a canopy. It's like a shading kind of canopy. It's got three points. It's got two points that are anchored to a wall, and one point that's on the ground. And the and this is the uh, amount of shade that it generates um, for a particular uh, sun point. And this could be a point that was determined by the sun system, like you guys worked on last week. Um, or it could be something out of, like, Diva or whatever. Basically, it's just a point that's going to deliver a vector, and that's what actually makes the uh, shade. Um, there is a, uh, like, a shading, like, component that's in, that's in Grasshopper. Um, that's kind of like a mesh shade right here, mesh shadow. So you have to convert your form into a mesh first, uh, and then you have a um, light ray, which I showed you guys how to do last time, and that will create this. So that's so that's actually kind of neat. Um, so okay, going back to our genetic system here, what's in the genome? A lot more sliders here. There's six of them. So there's X and a Y for that point. And there's an X and a Y for this point here. Well, X and a Z, pardon me. And an X and a Z for the other one. Okay. And so basically, those are the only things that you can you can make. Now, of course, if you were designing a canopy, you'd have more control. You know, you, it, this is a very very simplified thing of it. But um, that's what we're trying to do. So like the variables in the gene pool, there are six, and they go to the points. And then what, what are we maximizing for? We're maximizing for the area of shape. Okay, and it's the area of shade for one point, and that is also very limited. Uh, it's not like truly what we use as a design criteria. You might use like one of the equinoxes or something or lunchtime, um, but you'd really probably want to run one of these things over a series of days to get the optimal shading uh, for for those days, as opposed to just one day. But this is just an example. So anyway, okay. So similar to the last question, uh, first thing is to think about the best design solution. So Think about, um, you know, what would be the best design? Like, how would I get the most area? And then, and then just kind of play with it. And if you want to, you can go ahead and make a panel um, for this number and just observe, you know, what that what that actually is. Um, this is right now like a negative number, but don't don't worry about that. That's just um, these are here to basically uh, say whether there's a valid solution or not in the uh, system, and um, Anyway, I'll like talk about that in the video later. But basically, this is what's called what's this is what's called like a penalty function, and the penalty basically means like if some criteria is not satisfied, you want to make that number. So if we're trying to maximize this thing, the penalty function right is a very is a very big negative number, and what that will do is force the system to kill that solution. That's a way of in, enforcing that part of the genetic algorithm. Okay. Again, I'll kind of get into that later, but that's why that's a negative number because because this isn't a very good like solution. This is a very very small amount of shade, and we want to try to to maximize it. Okay. If you don't have penalty functions, it can take a lot longer to search the solution space, and so that's that's why those are in there. That's it's a way of kind of putting your thumb on the scale. Okay. Um, again, if you read David Rutten's articles, he talks about them as well. So, okay. Um, let's see here. The next part. Uh, so anyway. Um. Go ahead and try to observe the shading change. Write down the area of the canopy in the shaded area. Okay, so the first one is just to like make a sketch or a screenshot of your of your best solution to the problem. Okay, um, and think about how long it took you to do it too. And actually, I re read my question again. Um, let's see here. So actually, if, let's see. This is the uh, piece here. 
So if you take this piece, that's the area right there. So um, this is the what's going to go into the genetic solver. Um, but this is the actual area. So use use this when you're when you're messing around. So you could you can plug that in. So this is the shadow. Take the boundary of it. Make a surface. Get the area. You can take that. Go ahead and go ahead and bring that over here when you're messing with these components, and that'll be your kind of dashboard. Okay. So yeah, you can do that. All right. Um, next. Uh, close and reopen the Grasshopper file to reset the sliders, then run the Galapagos solver. Okay, stop when you feel you have arrived at a solution. Okay, so you know how to solve it. Just make sure that your solver is set to maximize. Okay, okay. write down the area of the sunshade and the size of the shaded area. Okay, make sure to do that. Okay, so the area of the sunshade and the size of the shaded area. Okay, um, so the area of the sunshade. So this is the, let's see here. Yeah. So this is the area of the of the shade right here, okay. And so what this is doing is saying like we don't want to have any sun shades that are really narrow strips that are you know just really not feasible like that don't have enough shade, and we don't want to have any that 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 yeah that don't produce uh, much shade. So that that's what these functions are doing. Um, okay. So again, this is the area of the sun shade. I think it says, yeah, canopy area. So if you go to view, or sorry, display names, oops, not that one. Um, yeah, if you turn off the icons, okay, so I went to display, draw icons, okay, so it says canopy area, shade area. I mean, that's helpful. Sorry, okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, save that, okay, and then. Um, Okay, read that question. Okay, then change the position of the sun point and run the solver again. Note how note how the solution changes. What's the limitation of this implementation for studying optimum shading over time? Given this, how would you use a tool like Galapagos to design a shading solution? Okay, so I kind of talked about that a little bit. Next, uh, open the script uh, lab 9c. So this is a variation of the script that attempts to optimize the solution by finding the smallest canopy with the largest shaded area. Make sure Galapagos is set to maximize the solution. Um, so it's a little bit different setup, right? Where it's actually looking at these two areas and the proportions of them, right? So it's trying to optimize for that condition. And then the last script that you open up, Lab 9D, it optimizes the solution based on the highest ratio um, between, sorry, okay. So this is finding the smallest canopy with the largest shaded area. And this is actually looking at the at the ratio. Sorry, I got those mixed up. Um, a higher ratio implies a more efficient solution, but the canopy area is not constrained. Okay, so you're going to run these three scripts: the first version that you opened, and then the second one, and then the third one. And you're going to make a two-axis chart, and you're going to look at those numbers. And then lastly, you're going to think about how adding the constraint of material usage changed the result of the solver. Okay. Um, and then lastly, you're going to reflect on this question about what are things that you might use evolutionary algorithms to explore? What are instances that might be useful in a design process? Okay. Um, for this one, I would make sure that you've watched that last video. I think there's some, there's some ideas and some examples in that video. And that video re kind of goes through all these questions and, and as, as sort of like a review. Um, so go ahead and do do all that stuff before you finish the the like lab uh, like assignment because I think there's there's some things that'll probably help you out. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Like you don't have to like make any scripts. You just have to play with them and uh, sort of like reflect on them. If you're interested in more evolutionary um, exploration, I have another lab um, that I'm not going to assign, but it's a little bit more like a problem solving lab. Um, I will I will post that for you guys as an option. Uh, but otherwise, this should all be like pretty 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 easy to follow. Okay, so have fun with it. Um, talk to each other about your solutions. Like uh, you know who, who got the best number for the isovist, who got the best numbers for the shading device. You might be surprised by some of the outcomes on some of the later ones. Okay, I will see you all in lab.